Too bad the line came out in a big snafu. being careful not to put my spurs into this tree because this lady likes to pay for you know the full deal I have opinions about how uh, how detrimental spurs might be and I don't think they're as detrimental as people think but yet I still follow the sort of industry standard because I like to be above reproach so anyway wearing spurs Came up on the Ronin Ascender, not poking the tree. Now I'm up here setting the tree up to rig. Not poking the tree, okay? Got this line, our, our lowering line will come through here and it's retrievable. It's going over this, uh, oh, these couple of limbs here and some more on the backside, but not terribly important. Um, how bomb tough that is because we're not going to take a big heavy thing but uh, this will redirect our our stuff all over this way and I'll tell you why later so this will be retrievable and it'll do no like rubbing rope damage to the tree and then my line also is over two big limbs and through a um, what I call a my saver it's a homemade you saver and uh, Joe made it for me so my rope is going through a pulley too and blah 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 we're such dang tree huggers right now but yeah we're gonna do this and i took off all the dead limbs that would impede our rigging of this dead top over here. Okay, YouTube, are you still with me? So, I don't know if you can see it, but right there is the fence. So, I'm entirely over the fence right now. And we need the whole tree back that way. So, that's what we're doing. So, the reason I'm doing it this way is rather than take all the limbs off and strip them out over the fence here I can just rig a big top over and then we can put a pole rope in the rest of the tree and it'll fit through there so I'll remove a little bit of limbs here around where I'm making the cut so that it doesn't crash those and break them off and they go over the other side of the fence and then we'll just send it <laughs> One little twig on this side of the fence, but that's it. Headache, dude. That bright shirt was handy.
like it. Okay, YouTube. See that rigging point up there? That's retrievable. So we don't have to go back up there again. He's Adam's going to pull that out. And there it goes. There it is. Thank you, Rope. You served us well. Hey, YouTube. You want to see how I do a running bowling? I usually tie it real fast and nobody knows how it happened, but I'll try and slow it down. So obviously we want to capture this. So we capture it. And then we just kind of forget about it. Don't mind this. Dang it, Adam, you're making us look bad. Sending us the, oh well. We look bad. Okay, so, so once you have it like this, you lay it over and through. And then what you use this to just kind of push the loop. Then you go around and through. Like that. I'll show that more later. Still not spurring. See? Rope tangling on barbed wire. This is a 200 foot rope with about 10 feet left over. <clears throat> this is the thing that I call my saver because it's mine. It's not a you saver. Joe made it. It's a little burlier than the tree stuff you saver ones for bigger diameter and whatnot. Use it all the time. through there so go ahead and pull it over that's the spot you don't have to do the rabbit hole and then the rabbit and around the tree you know instead you can do the rabbit makes the hole see like this see one hand see the hole there One hand. That's just how fluid it can be when, when you use this end of the rope to sort of make the hole. Like that. You're helping out with your left hand too. But you're kind of twisting the hole in. Over, under, twist. Back in. There's your bowling. And when you get that down quick, you'd be surprised. I mean, I fumbled it a little bit, but it can become crazy fast. That's a bowling. See? And the running bowling? 
So the running bowling, let's say, let's say we're gonna capture this limb. See, this is we're gonna we're gonna pretend we're gonna pretend that this is a tree limb, and it's not very common that we're just gonna make a bowling. See. That's the bowl, and again, this is from tying it from the uh, different direction, but it's the same thing. Rabbit goes over, and when you pull this, it makes the hole happen. And then, boom, he just runs around and in. See? It's just, it can be blazingly, mind-blowingly fast if, if you know how to do it. When you're ready, you know, you just, boom, bowling. You know, you just, boom, bowling. So now we want to do a running bowling. So we're just going to capture this leg of rope. We're going to, we're going to put it here. We're going to just drop that and forget about it. Now the bowling is all about this and this. Forget about it. Now the bowling is all about this and this. So this is your rabbit. He's going to make a hole, watch. Boom. Boom, he's already out. He's already out of the hole. Boom, he's already out. He's already out of the hole. He skipped that whole other section where he had to pop out. He just was born out of the hole. Then boom, through here and in. So there's your running bowling. That also can be become crazy fast, you know. You put this around, around the limb, you drop that leg of line. And yes, if, if, you, if you doubt me, that's the bowling. There's no reason to tie it that fast, but it's handy to know how, right? I'm just driving away from the job, and I'll do a voiceover explanation of it. It was kind of an odd thing. Uh, another kind of tender uh, neighborhood relations thing not too bad but we should have been able to just drop that tree all straight down on the other side of the fence there and then clean it up and boom you know easy peasy but um, the client thought that the neighbor was in her words a little cagey about whether we should do that and I thought well maybe she just doesn't want to hassle them and uh, the job was bid for for good neighbor relations and dropping the tree down there but after I talked to the neighbors I kind of wasn't sure what they thought they didn't KG was pretty accurate so I was like okay well we'll just rig it back so that's why we're rigging this tree back against its lean over onto the client's side and it gave me a chance to play around with the Ronin and you know I like to do a little bit of rigging I haven't exactly done much climbing lately and I'm pretty bad out of practice actually but yeah that's the neighbor thing you never know if it starts to look tricky with whether you're gonna have you know, because the neighbor doesn't owe you nothing. You're working for the client, not their neighbor. Why should they, you know, let open the door and let you in? I understand that. So unless they're just like, come on in, let's get this done, no problem. Then I'm like, oh, never mind, we'll just stay on our side. That's what we did here. I guess that's the end of this explanation. It seemed like there was more to it, but there isn't. We went ahead and did it a little bit harder way. Didn't change the price either, just did it the harder way. I really like that lady. That's funny, huh? Like if I didn't like that lady, I might change the price. <laughs> Oh, I'm just analyzing myself here, but yeah, that might be true. If somebody was hard to deal with and you were adding extra work, 
you might change the price unless you had some happy, happy love vibes going. That lady's really cool. There's a long story there. Okay, I'll go ahead. I'll tell the story. So how I met this lady a long time ago is her neighbor, a neighbor on the other side, had this really old cat that got chased up there by my clients, who I didn't know was my client yet because I hadn't met her yet, by my client's dog. And this uh, super 18 year old cat used the last of its power to hike up this tree to get away from this dog. And it was truly not gonna be able to come down. I mean, it was, it only lived for a few months um, after I rescued it because it was it was in old age Anyway, it was a church day for me. I wasn't going to be doing any work But the guy I Just felt sorry for him on the phone because I believed him that and he didn't have any money He was uh, he was house sitting for his dad his Dad was out of town and he told me who his dad was. He was an influential guy. And don't worry, it'll be good for you. And I was like, no, you don't worry. I'm not getting paid for this. I'll come do it. So I brought the, uh, the kids. And I went out there and rescued this cat. And it was one of those cats that... Hold on a sec. So, so I got a couple of my kids because I wanted, you know, to take my kids and be a hero for my kids, right? So I brought the kids and uh, I went out there with a bucket truck and the thing, when you go to rescue a cat with a bucket truck, it's amazing how many times the bucket truck gets there like on the last little bit of how far it can go. Well, that's what it was. It was perfect. It got just far enough to reach the cat and I went up there with uh, this little carrying case like you might uh, go on the airplane with. And um, that cat was like so thankful to see me. It just happily meowed its way right in the carrying case. It didn't try to do the kung fu and slash my eyes out. It just was like, thank you so much, dude. And it went in the carrying case. Big hero, daddy's a hero didn't charge them and then everybody in the neighborhood heard about this guy who came and had a successful cat rescue on an old cat and I have I have been doing work thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of work ever since over this job I did for free because it just carried so much weight with so many people and so yeah that's kind of interesting that's I, that's how I met that lady but yeah we go back a long ways so yeah I'm done that's my video for the day